All right, I'd like to call to order the uh, meeting of the Cape Elizabeth uh, Planning Board for Tuesday, May 18th. Uh, first item we have on the agenda is um, uh, the approval of the minutes from the uh, April meeting. Oh, no, March meeting, because we didn't have an April meeting. Um, does anybody have any comments, thoughts, suggestions, omissions from the previous minutes? Hearing none, do I hear any motions to approve? Who isn't here? Oh. I was not uh, So moved. <laughs> Second? Second. All in favor of the motion? You can vote on the motion. Uh, five nothing. Motion carries, the minutes are approved. Uh, next item we have on the agenda is, uh, I'd like to note that uh, Beth Richardson, the, the sitting vice chair, has resigned from the planning board due to uh, other commitments. And as such, we need to vote on an interim vice chair now and the uh, end of the year. Uh, do I have any nominations? I can nominate, can I? I'd like oh. to nominate Elaine Bathman. Second. Except? I accept. Any, any uh, discussion on the motion? Any other nominations? Well, she has to accept before she can Here. put her name in the hat. Um, any other motions, nominations? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? All opposed? Congratulations. Thank you. I'll be sure to be absent to see how you do next month. No, just <laughs> uh, first item we have on the agenda is a uh, substantive item, is a consent agenda item, Jay Cox Farm Stand site plan amendment. Jay Cox is requesting an amendment to the previously approved farm stand located at 1198 Sawyer Road to install lighting for the parking lot and walkway. If uh, the applicant could come up to the microphone, explain what he's looking for, we will first determine whether it's a proper consent agenda item, and then if it is, we'll vote on it. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Jay Cox. I'm at 1148 Sawyer Road. Um, I have a tree farm and farm stand. And I am, in fact, requesting an amendment to my site plan to add a floodlight fixture in the parking area and um, <coughs> uh, pathway lighting, as indicated on the plan. <coughs> the site plan um, has the, the position of the fixtures on it, as well as the range of the half-foot candle illumination. There's also the uh, photometrics and the information I submitted. The photometrics are a little bit confusing because they're supposed to be in color, but I have indicated the um, half-foot candle uh, uh, range on that plot. Um, also indicated on there is the uh, routing of the conduit, the way we'll wire the fixtures if this is approved. And I think everything else is pretty clear if anybody has any questions for me. To my memory, we, dis we discussed this potential. Right. We approved the subdivision. That's I mean, right. The site plan in the first place. Right. Does that ring a bell with the other mm -hmm. one members here? Yeah. Yes. Anyone wishing to uh, discuss? No. Nope. Hearing none, do I have any motion for the board to consider? Barbara? Um, motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented the application of Jay Cox to amend the previously approved site plan for the farm stand located at 1148 Sawyer Road to add a light to the parking area and walkway lighting be approved as a cons consent agenda item. Second. Motion having been made by Barbara, seconded by Elaine. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Motion carries five enough. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a Rudy's of the Cape restaurant site plan amendment. Two Lights General Store LLC is requesting an amendment to the previously approved 80 seat restaurant convenience store located at the existing Rudy's establishment at 517 Ocean House Road. To remove the requirement for a crosswalk across Route 77, Section 19-9 site plan amendment. If the uh, applicant could come up and introduce. Oh, I communicated with the applicant's rep representative this afternoon, but mm -hmm. he's not here at the moment. 
And who is that, your representative? Oh, Pat Carroll. Oh, yeah, that's right. But he was expected to be here? He was, in t yes. Perhaps we could. Yeah, we'll move on to the next one. He may have to wait a few minutes. Next item on the agenda, Shore Road Private Access Way Resource Protection Permit. MC Associates is requesting a private access way permit and resource protection permit for a lot located at 1055 Shore Road, Section 19-7-9 Private Access Way Permit Completeness, and Section 19-8-3 Resource Protection Permit Completeness. If the applicant could come up to the podium, introduce the project, explain briefly what you're looking for. Uh, for the public, what's on for tonight's hearing is the issue of whether the plan is complete. for the low-tech uh, right. presentation. But, uh, my name is John Witten with uh, Teradyne Consultants representing MC Associates uh, as their engineer. And uh, this property is uh, a small lot. It's approximately 33,000 square feet. It's located at 1055 Shore Road. It's about 100 feet wide and about 350 feet deep. Uh, it's a currently wooded and undeveloped property. It's right across the street basically from uh, Delano Park entrance number five and is uh, um, excuse me <laughs> the applicant is looking to get a private access way permit for this property due to the fact that the property does not meet the current standards for road frontage and uh, actually for the uh, lot area as well. The lot has been found to be a lot of record by the code enforcement officer and um, we believe that with the private access way permit we will be able to uh, develop this lot, the applicant will be able to sell this lot I should say as a single family uh, lot. The proposed access way will extend uh, into the property approximately 150 feet. The entrance will be uh, close to existing guard rail section on Shore Road and will be a paved 14 foot wide driveway. The sub base of the road will be extended to an 18 foot width and uh, the shoulders and, and side slopes will be grassed uh, for aesthetics and for erosion control. There's a strip of wetlands you can see on the lighter green on the plan that bisects the property basically flows through the property. It, uh, it excuse me, it, it brings flow from an up, upgraded wetland on the uh, conservation land through the property to a smaller wetland uh, adjacent to Shore Road. And that wetland is drained by a 24-inch culvert that outlets to the Delano Park area. Um, and it proceeds through that property to uh, the ocean. We've uh, studied the area at and using this culvert as a study point, the inlet of that, and uh, we're going to work with Steve Harding to finalize our subdivision, uh, excuse me, our stormwater plans. Uh, we do have a few revisions to that to make, but uh, overall I think that that culvert is adequate to take the small amount of impervious area that we're adding uh, to the site. What revisions do you expect to make to the to Just the small things like adding arrows, uh, direction arrows to the plans, and to sit down with Steve and, and talk over the, uh, the breakout of the watersheds. Uh, he was a little bit confused as to um, which watersheds the new impervious area was going into and uh, that's actually split between two sub areas uh, and uh, overall we do show a slight decrease in the peak rate of flow to that culvert and that's due to the fact that uh, this property currently is part of a larger watershed. And we're at, yes, we're adding the impervious area, but that impervious area is directly adjacent to that culvert. And there's a larger, as, as stormwater uh, builds up in the back through the conservation land, it flows through the woods, it gets slowed down, and uh, we'll pond up into the wetland and cross through. This area here will have a faster rate of flow and will enter the culvert before the other peaks get there. 
and it's just a timing issue. Uh, but that actually usually results in a decrease in the flow to that culvert. I know it's kind of counterintuitive, it, it seems, but as the, the calculation is a peak flow, and what that does is it, it calculates the time and the amount of water coming to that culvert. And if we can get water to that culvert before the major peak comes, then that kind of filters through and it reduces the overall peak. So the total volume is the same? Total volume is the same and actually uh, realistically is, is slightly increased with the impervious area that we're adding. But I stress slightly on this property particularly because we have D soils, which are hollow soils that uh, you know, shed runoff the most. And on top of that, we have a lot of ledge in very shallow bedrock. So this site is almost you know, impervious itself. Uh, and, and so we're, yes, we are deleting some woods and adding a pervious area, but it's not uh, a, as dramatic as effect as if you were taking a, a nice uh, wooded sandy soil and adding, taking out the woods and adding the impervious area. It doesn't have the same effect. So overall, uh, I believe that we're going to maintain the same peak, if not a little bit lower than what's there today, and that that you know, we're not going to introduce a, uh, an increase to the flooding uh, capacity of this culvert, and therefore we're not impacting that culvert. And that's uh, what our stormwater report focused on, was that, that inlet to that culvert. Any, any other changes you expect to make to the stormwater plan? No, no. And I had a subcatchment labeled as 3S on the plan and 6S on my, on my uh, hydrocad calculation. So just very minor uh, typographical things like that. Um, the other things in, in Maureen's memo that we brought up was that we do have four test pits, passing test pits on the site. Uh, we do not have a finalized design of a septic system. And that was basically due to the fact that we don't know, we don't have a lot of area to put this house, but we don't know exactly where they're going to want that. And I guess I, my question is, will that, uh, will that alter our building permit or someone's building permit if we have a recorded HHE 200 for this site? And will this site plan or permit have to be amended if that HHE 200 form wants to be in a different place uh, when they build the house? Uh, two, two issues on You have to have the HHE 200 to get the approval, don't you? Well, it's up to the board. Oh, I thought um, that was part of it. Board staff is recommending that, yes, you should require a design of a septic system, not just passing test pits. And to okay. answer the second question, About if minute. you did prepare a full design, you located a septic system on the site, and you received an approval, and then the new buyer wanted to move the septic system to another location, they could do that as long as they created a new HHE 200 for sure. arm and design that was approved by the code officer. So you don't need site plan amendment to do that? No. Okay. I just wanted to be clear on that. Would... No, that's the way I understood yeah. it. It's, okay. you can, it's just, we just need to know that a system can go in a place. Yes. And we're absolutely sure that can happen. We'll just fill out the paperwork to, to show you. Um, and then, uh, the, since the time that I... Uh, Put this in to now the, the applicant has assured me that he will uh, he wants to hook up to the public water system and not do a drinking well and uh, <laughs> I've emailed the Portland Water District uh, for their letter and, and certainly we'll have that for the next meeting um, and then as far as the resource protection permit we are looking to uh, we're proposing a wetland fill of approximately 270 uh, square feet which is hatched on the plan um, this is a pretty narrow uh, you know, section of wetland through the site. And we're, we're trying to we shrunk our road section down as, as much as possible uh, for your ordinance and feel that uh, we've minimized that as much as, as possible for this site. Um, and we've provided a wetland uh, delineation report from a geologist and wetland scientist. And um, although we don't have, we have a medium intensity soils map, but we do not have a high intensity soils survey. And I guess I'd like to ask for a waiver of that if possible, uh, due to the fact that we do have test pits on the site, we have the soils, and we have a delineation of a 
rather narrow wetland. We'll come back to that once you sure. keep going through here. Uh, the other thing is uh, site distance. Uh, TY Lynn has provided uh, letters requ uh, requiring the removal of some ledge on the site. That ledge is located in this area of the property. Uh, and it's indicated on the plans where this grading indicates the removal of the, uh, of the ledge. And we'll certainly, we can hatch that to make it a little bit more clear. But per the uh, request of T.Y. Lynn, we've, we're removing approximately 15 feet in width of ledge and about 40 feet of depth uh, in ledge. And that will give us over the 250 foot uh, minimum stopping site distance for a driveway uh, for this road. And there already is over 270 uh, feet for stopping site distance in the other direction, which is the north direction. Um, and I guess that we do have a letter from the, uh, the review engineer, but most of that is, is plan work, uh, little details here and there, and a couple notes. We will certainly, uh, I, I figure I'm just meeting with Steve and hopefully getting a letter for next meeting that says that where these comments have been addressed. I don't see anything that's um, of great consequence uh, to, uh, to the project um, and things can easily be changed. We do, we do need to, I don't know if I mentioned it, um, we do need to request a waiver again of the, for the resource protection permit that we have two foot contours on our plan and uh, the resource protection permit requires one foot contours. I believe I do have enough points to uh, interpolate a one foot contour if the waiver is not granted, but um, we, we'd assume just leave the plans uh, the way they, they are for, for the uh, survey information. And I know there were a couple letters of uh, concern from the Conservation Commission, I believe, and, and from the Delano Park people. And uh, that all had to do with stormwater. And we feel that we have analyzed the area, that we've got that inlet as our study point, and that we're not going to impact that, that area. So um, I guess that's it. OK. I have a few questions. Can you look at uh, Steve Harding's letter? Sure. Item number six. Oh, yes. Yeah, we will. Uh, it says that we're looking to either sheet flow water over the driveway uh, or that we need a culvert. And that's, uh, I will revise the grading so that it pushes the water to the wetland uh, so that we, we will neither have sheeting or a culvert at that entrance. That it will be pushed to the, to the 15 inch culvert. Okay. So you can revise the plan to reflect that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, You bagged the well, right? What's that? You decided to go. Yeah, water. yeah. The well's gone. Doing public water. Uh, you, go ahead, go ahead, Barbara. While I'm looking at <laughs> my other questions. Um, is there a sewer line in in Shore Road or not? No. no never mind. Can I ask a question? So what are you proposing with the one-foot contours? You're proposing modifying your plan, or you're asking for a waiver? Um, you, what I heard you say is you I, have I can modify the plan. Okay. I, I think I have enough points to accurately. That, that makes that easy. OK. Sorry about the mic. <clears throat> and number 15. Yeah, that's, that's talking about the stormwater plan itself. Um, and we will work be, with... Be you addressed. Yeah, yep, we addressed. And, and you know, in, uh, he leads it with, we agree in concept that the existing 24-inch will be able to accommodate the pro proposed project. However, However <laughs> few things, okay. And Eight. those few things are relatively uh, ins insignificant to the results of the study. Um, and I will have that 
I'll address with Steve before I come back. Okay. Your risk. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I have a question. Barbara, go ahead. Yeah, do you know whether or not this, the, um, the rainfall amounts from Cumberland County are substantially different from those in No, Oxford they're within County? a tenth. Okay. Yeah, that was just a typographical error on my part. Was it a typographical error, or did you actually pick up the wrong information? Well, it's, it's in a in a line form. column, and I just picked the column wrong to the right column. instead of the left. Okay. And it's, I know it's uh, 3.0, uh, 4.7, 5.5, and I think 6.4 for Cumberland County. Right, let me get to that section. You within say a, that again. Um, 3.0. I'm not on the right page. For the two year. It goes, it goes up a tenth in the 10 year storm. It goes up a tenth in the 25 year storm. And I think it goes up a tenth in the 100 year storm as well. Okay, so it's just yeah. a tenth of an inch. But that will change in both the pre and post analysis. Mm -hmm. um, yep. It is hard to understand how putting more impervious surface on this lot is going to change to the better. The well, it's not. Enough. It's not, it doesn't seem terribly significant when you read it, but it seems odd that it would change it. Yeah, well, it, I use the, the lowbrow uh, approach of, if you think of a, a tower and, uh, tower, shower and tub combination, okay? You turn on the tub water, and it, there's a full flow right to that drain, okay? And that starts to back up even if the drain's open. Then you play with the thing and you get it to come up over the top, and it comes over the top and it hits the back of the tub and it runs down. And by the time that happens, that water's not ponding anymore. And so as you're doing that situation, it's the same amount of volume of water going, but it's a different timing issue. And so the drain can handle that flow a little bit better. And if you take a cup, and as the shower's going, and you take a cup of water and you throw it at that drain, it's going to take that water and not pond and not, you know, not overtop the drain. So it's a, it's a timing issue. It, even if you add that little bit of impervious area, that small peak, before the big peak gets there, then it reduces the overall peak. It's just a, a, an accounting kind of thing. It flattens the more, curve. Yeah. How much more water volume will you have going to the culvert as a result of the impervious surface? Um, I can probably tell you that. I looked for it. Volume is uh, 3.9 acre feet in the post development. How much? Uh, 3.98. And yeah, see, it's only 2.95 in the um, pre development. So it is more volume. But it's. Well, like a third more. Yeah, yeah, it's more volume. But the way that stormwater is regulated, it's, it's the peak flow. And so, yes, it's. Absolutely, we're, we're going to add a little bit of water to that culvert, but it, it should not affect the, the characteristics of that culvert to be able to handle the, the big storms. And does that calculation take into account how long these storms are? I mean, there can be, you know, short and ten storms, but then... Well, that's, that's where the, the rainfall amounts come in, mm -hmm. we're regulated to certain tests over the areas, and um, we're... We're stuck with the three inches per 24-hour period is a two-year storm, okay? And then a 100-year storm is more like 6.5 to 6.7, depending on the area, and that's in 24 hours. And I know that this, this spring, we, we had, within three weeks, we had eight inches, like down, I had a project in North Berwick. We got hit with eight inches one day, Three weeks later, they got hit with nine inches within 24 hours. So we and had 100 year storms twice. Yeah, twice. Well, right. And you know, right. And, and you think about it, it's a 1% chance that that type of rainfall is going to happen in any one year. Right. But we had it twice. And, but, but that's a, a short duration, and, and where, you know, the, the DP regulates it in, the, in a certain fashion, and this, this stormwater analysis has been formulated over years. Mm. And, that, and that's what, how we do it. Right. Are we held to those standards, morning? Yeah. 
um, 11 on, on Maureen's memo, the pledge removal. Pledge removal? Yeah. Yeah. You're going to show that location on the plan? Did you, see, did you address that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll hatch the area of where it will be. The grading here indicates that removal. The change in, in grade here is... I see. You're, you're bringing it to that grade. Yeah, this, this will be the finished grade. I'm going to flatten it out and put a ditch. So whatever is in the way in that That grading, goes away. Boom. Yeah. Okay. I missed that. I'm sorry. If you said it earlier. All right, I'm all done my questions. Anyone else have any other questions? What about number five um, on the engineer's letter? The design of the turnaround is whether or not it complies? Yes, uh, I did need to talk about that. Uh, we met with the fire chief and uh, with the planner at our pre submittal meeting, and uh, I brought the, that section of the ordinance with me of the, the standard turnarounds and, and asked the fire chief if that is what he wanted to see on such a project as this or a driveway. And he told me that uh, as long as a B40 turning template can be uh, put on this property and that that, which is a tour bus, um, that if the, a tour bus can turn around on the property, then he will be able to get all, his, all of his equipment to turn around. And so this has been designed using that standard that a, a tour bus can pull in, back up, and pull out. Um, and so that's, that's what I went by. I, w it was, I was not led to the fact that I needed to meet the design standards of, of roadways for the turnaround. Yeah. Is that something we can waive, Maureen? No, he, he's right. The standard is a B40 turning okay. vehicle. So that's something that I, I guess I will step in and make sure that we resolve with the town engineer. It may be that he will just need you to show the yeah, I'll, I can get him a copy of how that there, works. But that is, that is the standard. Okay. The rest of it looks like logistics, dimensions of the turnaround added to the plan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? I just have a procedural question based on the two letters that we've received from the Conservation Commission and from the Delano Park Association. At the moment, we're voting on completeness. And it appears that the applicant, certainly after meeting again with Steve Harding, has information that addresses both of these issues. So that my, my understanding of our process is that the specifics of these concerns go, go more to whether we agree with what is in those reports that would come later rather than prior to a completeness vote. Is that correct? That's the way I would interpret it, too. OK. So you're aware of the two? Yes. Yeah, I can the, the two sources of input we have. And obviously, we're going to have to address those in more detail after we get past the completeness sure. phase. OK. Yeah. Barbara? I guess I'd like to segue in that. Um, I certainly would recommend that you, when you come back here again, you go over everything, all your numbers, all um, your calculations, and be able to demonstrate to us that this is not going to pool, that it's not going to create a problem on the other side of the road, um, that the stormwater, because the way I'm looking at it, and I marked up my my plat is that all the water is flowing down this lot uh -huh. and if that is not an adequate system then you're going to have to do something else so that's the biggest concern that i have other than that it's a bowling alley and i'm not sure what kind of a creative house is going to be put on it but that's not our problem right <laughs> no and that's understood and, and um as, as part of the stormwater analysis, the 15-inch the culvert that's going under this driveway was sized in that program uh, to take the 100-year storm. And it, it's, the capacity of that culvert is around 26 to 27 cubic feet per second of, of flow, and we're down about the 20 range. We're at 19 point something. So it's, it's an, I believe it's an adequate system through my design for, for the driveway of what it's receiving. And it's going to deliver that that flow to the existing system on the shore road. 
And again, if the analysis will, I'll explain it when I, I come back again. Hey, do you, are you, and I'm sure you know exactly what the system that it's going into yes. consists yeah. of. Yeah, I've walked the site, I've got all the resource maps, and, and I think my watersheds are correct, and um, you know, my elevations of the ponds, and... and well, just be as thorough as you can when you come back with all of that. Go back over it again. Sure. That's what I would advise. And the other thing is there was a letter from um, Jay Wall, the attorney. Um, yeah, regarding the uh, road maintenance. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Maureen was nice enough to uh, supply us with an example. The applicant is meeting that example, and, and we'll have that for you for the next meeting. That's fine. Thank you. I think it would be really interesting to see... Um, how this drainage system would accommodate the weather we had this spring. And I don't know if that's within our purview, but given that we did have, for your comment, two 100-year storms in a short time frame, um, what, you know, what would happen on the site? Would we have had cooling to have accommodated it? And I, I don't know if we can legally ask. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with you asking for that information. I can certainly put in those numbers. I'll, I'll put in like eight and a half inches or something like that, and and we'll see what it does. Now, just understand that it's it's my job to make a statement that we're not negatively impacting the existing conditions of that culvert in that system. Right. So, so if it floods in the eight and a half condition, then then it does. But it does right now. Right, if but it does it's the today. Third, but timing is everything because it's yes. the third more water. And so if we have water coming in over a prolonged period of time, it might exacerbate yeah. the existing. Oh, we'll, we'll look at it. That. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. can go over that. Great. Will the removal of the wedge help that at all? I don't think it will impact it. Uh, the, only, the benefit of removing the ledge is that we're going to put a better defined ditch on the side of, of Shore Road. And um, we're going to actually... Uh, take some of the, the water that now rushes down the ledgy side of this, hits a, a paved uh, shoulder, and gets into that wetland quickly. Uh, we're going to take it through our ditch around. You know, so that you know. might help it then? I mean, that might help the situation? To yeah, I, I, it's going to control it. Uh, it's going to slow that water down, so we're not going to get a, a potential of erosion. Uh, but the timing of it is, is all in the model. And, and it's, it's, it's not a negative impact. I don't know if it's going to be a benefit or not, but as far as the peak flows. Thank you. All set. Anyone else? Maureen, do you have any comments? I welcome the motion. I'll move. Go ahead. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of MC Associates for a private access way permit and resource protection permit for a lot located at 1055 Shore Road be deemed complete. Motion made. Have any seconds? Second. Motion having been made by Elaine and seconded by Barbara. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? All opposed? One opposed. Um, so the, the plan has been deemed complete. I would caution the applicant that your risk always at this oh, yeah. stage is if you come back and there's something serious missing, yeah. we have no alternative, but to, we, we potentially could turn it down. So. Well, I'm still. Okay. I'm still. Um, next motion we need is to, I'm assuming we don't want another site walk. We, we should make clear that we have had one site walk. No, well, that's fair. But, but I don't see the need to go back out there as a group. Does anyone else feel differently? So we just need a motion to table it and set it for a public hearing. So moved. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of MC Associates for a private access way permit and a resource protection permit for a lot located at 1055 Shore Road be tabled to the regular June 15, 2010 meeting of the Planning Board at which time a public hearing will be held. Motion have been made. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion having been made by Elaine, and second by Victoria. All in favor of the motion? Oh, discussion of the motion first. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? 
Motion carries five nothing. Thank you. Thank you. See you next month. Next item on the agenda. These are the Cape Restaurant Site Plan Map. True Light General Store LLC is requesting an amendment to the previously approved ADC restaurant green store located at the existing Rudy's establishment at 517 Ocean House Road to remove the requirement for the crosswalk across Route 77, section 19-9 site plan. The applicant could introduce himself. Sure. Uh, my name is Patrick Carroll. I'm with Carroll Associates, and I'm representing uh, Rudy's of the Cape on this project. Um, we were back in before you in March and uh, received a site plan approval. I think it was March 16th. Um, and one of the conditions of that approval, we had a lot of discussion about uh, overflow parking, and. Um, there was agreement that uh, the applicant would would secure 15 spaces at uh, St. Bart's, and um, as as the discussion kind of continued, there was a condition of approval that that a crosswalk be installed uh, if and when those approvals were uh, secured. And so we went away from that, and uh, within a few days, contacted Bob Malley and. Um, tried to begin that process. And as Bob kind of began to research this with DOT, um, we all came to an agreement that it was going to be very difficult to meet some of the conditions of the uh, DOT uh, crosswalk policy, which I think I submitted along with this application mm -hmm. letter. Um, there's a series of, I think, about 12 conditions that are, that are guidelines for crosswalks. And, and basically what happens is even though the town of Cape Elizabeth has, it's, it's, it's in an urban compact, and so the town has responsibility for the roads for Route 77 within the compact limits. Um, the approval of a crosswalk really, you have to follow the town, or anybody has to follow DOT, these DOT guidelines. And if you don't follow the guidelines, you have to submit um, a full traffic study to DOT for their approval of this as a, as a site-specific crosswalk. And there are several conditions in here that, um, that we just can't meet. And so um, after some discussion, I think Maureen had some discussion with Mike McGovern and um, then called me and requested that, that we request an amendment to the application or to the approval. Uh, just because it is going to be a condition that it's going to be very difficult to meet. And I can go through some of these guidelines and how we, how we really can't meet them, uh, if you'd like. You know, the first and probably the, uh, the, uh, the greatest one to overcome, although the town, I believe the town has actually applied to DOT for this, is that um, the state will not allow, the guidelines don't allow a crosswalk and along a roadway that, uh, that exceeds 35 miles an hour. And Route 77 in this location is posted at 40 miles an hour. And, um, you know, we've had some discussions with DOT and, and <coughs> indicated that, um, that that five mile an hour difference is, is enough that they would not approve a crosswalk at that, that location. I believe the town is, has then, since then, petitioned DOT to to reduce the speed limit, and I'm not sure what the status of that is, but I, I understand it's not going well. So, Just in that section, from what I understand. Just in that section, yes. Um, so that's, that's one of the guidelines that we can't meet. Um, probably this, the second most critical one really has to do with um, um, crossing from, from Rudy's to the other side of the road. And the problem is we can meet According to, according to the guidelines and to ADA, um, if, there's a, if there's a crosswalk and a sidewalk connecting a crosswalk, the sidewalk has to provide an accessible way to that crosswalk. So there has to be accurate kind of transitions, whether it's a curb ramp or if there are curbs or some other accessible way to get from the sidewalk to the crosswalk. The problem occurs on the other side of the crosswalk because there is no 
sidewalk on that end. And so, you know, and I've talked to several civil engineers and traffic engineers. We talked to Tom Goral from Goral Palmer. And they all said it's, they would not approve, they would not stamp a plan that had a crosswalk on it that led to nowhere, which is basically kind of what this is doing. So part of the issue then is that we can, we can meet the, all the requirements on our side, but the other side leaves everything kind of hanging. And another one of the guidelines here is that you have to have safe landing zones once you get to the other side and they don't consider a gravel shoulder as a safe landing zone. So um, while there could be some paved area created there, um, it still kind of begs the question of, you know, where is this going? And it would be kind of a, could be a liability on the town's part and clearly on uh, our part if we kind of propose this and, and uh, somebody went across the road and had no place to, to get out of the way and got hit by a car. So. Um, so there's, there's several conditions here that we're just not comfortable with and, um, and felt like it, it's worth some discussion with the board. So, so you're, you're looking for the uh, condition four to be removed completely. Just, I just want that clear. Um, I think it'd be, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, an, that's an easy answer. <laughs> yes. I'm not trying to be tricky. I'm just, I was kind of uncomfortable with the way this was drafted in the first place because it says once the appropriate approvals are, are granted. And what you're saying, and correct me if I have this wrong, is there's just no way we can get the approvals even if we, in good faith, go get them. So why go get them? Is that well, I think, I think you'd spend a lot of time and money trying to secure approvals. an approval that, you know, is, is, may or may not happen. And, um, and then once the, the other issue is, I, I think part of, the, part of the only way that you could kind of work this through with DOT would be to construct a sidewalk along, um, along the other side of the road. Which again begs the question because it doesn't go anywhere. Because it doesn't go anywhere, right. I mean, we have sidewalks all over town that don't go anywhere. In fact, we're putting a sidewalk in front of Rudy's that doesn't really go anywhere at this point in time. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, but the, the theory with uh, this particular sidewalk was to connect the parking behind the church right. to Rudy's in some sort of safe right. manner. Because if you are using that parking, you want some way for people to be alerted driving down 77 that somebody may be crossing there during your business hours. So, exactly. No, I, I think it makes sense conceptually. It's just that when you when you start to really kind of make it happen, it's, it's proving very difficult. Okay. That's, those were my questions. Barbara? I just have a curiosity question. I wasn't here. I was out of town, so I didn't hear the discussion. I did read the minutes, though, but uh, there's a parking lot right behind you in the new, at the new building. There is. Did that not work out for? Um, well, I think I think you know there were a couple of a couple of reasons. We did look at that initially, and um, and there were a couple of reasons that that we didn't really kind of pursue it beyond some initial contacts. First being that uh, Mr. Ingalls was trying to sell that property, and he didn't want to kind of tie I, that project up with any kind of mm -hmm. binding kind of commitment side commitment. I mean, it would make clear sense to kind of do some shared parking. It does make clear and sense. And in fact, we have, we have a pedestrian connection between the two on the plan, too, I believe. Unless we took that off, I can't remember. Um, but the second reason for that is that access to that parking lot would have to come off of... Um, Davis. 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 Davis, and that's a private way. And that's a private way. And um, out of respect for the neighbors, um, we decided that we didn't want to introduce traffic on, on that road, so um, so Mary kind of approached the church, and the church was more than willing to to uh, agree to allow us to park there. Okay, thank you. Did I read in the minutes that parking is legal on 77 <laughs> on that west side of 77? We need to be careful what we say by 77. I talked to the police chief very. Uh, at length about this. Uh -huh. You cannot park on the paved surface okay. of Route 77, but you can park on the grass 
shoulder. Okay, so including the paved shoulder. You cannot park. You can't park on the paved surface. Right, you can't it's it's park bike off wear. the paved surface. Okay, because um, I ride my bike down there frequently, and um, there's a restaurant just to the north of there, the Good Table, and um, frequently people park on the shoulder there. And as a biker, that doesn't scare me. What actually scares me is people backing out of the existing Rudy's parking lot, which is a problem that's going to be solved. That's all going to be solved, right? Um, so I think from a safety perspective, having people park, patrons park on the unpaved surface of 77 is the way to go, rather than to have them crossing the street. Being to sit to behind the church. Yes. Well, go ahead. I think people, I'm going to sound terrible when I say this, but I, I think people need sometimes to watch out for themselves. And I don't think we can protect everybody from every single thing. And if they want to park across the street and cross the street, take their children's hands if they have children with them, and if they don't, look both ways and cross the street. I mean, I don't see that it's that big a problem not to have a crosswalk. And I, there were some other things that I would have spoken about, but I can't speak about them anymore for the project. But, it, but a crosswalk doesn't seem to me to be that well, it, and it wasn't important. at the discussion, Barbara. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. I don't think the applicant said, "Oh, I don't want to really want to do this." They, no, no, I understand, but I, I, I think that he can't. They can't do it. I mean, there are too many problems, and the biggest, the biggest overriding problem that is insoluble at this point is the speed limit. And there's nothing any of us can do about the speed limit. That's what the rule is. It's cast in concrete, and there's nothing we can do. And well, so, not, yeah. to me, just it's, remove that requirement. It's not really cast in concrete. You know, and and it, part of the reasons I was uncomfortable with this was because, you know, it seemed open-ended. I mean, in theory, this condition could stay there, and if you truly don't get appropriate approvals because you can't, there's, it doesn't, you know, it, it only kicks in once you get the approvals. So, I mean... Mm. I, I want to so add to no action to be taken. Well, that's the point. They could still do everything they were going to do otherwise, but ultimately, if all the stars line up and there is approvals granted, we, I guess I still expect the applicant to put the crosswalk in. I, I would have to say, um, kind of contradictory, but I, I like the crosswalk. I like it because it gives a point of orientation to guide pedestrians across the road so you don't have them running across at any point. Um, it's a position that pedestrians where they can probably they'll put the crosswalk if this is approved by the state and the best place to be seen by the oncoming traffic. Mm -hmm. um, a crosswalk would limit the pedestrian traffic to that one specific location and it just and it provides the pedestrians with a right of way. Once you're in that crosswalk, it may be a false sense of safety, but it's a little sense of safety when you grab your child's hand and you do go across the street. And I did have questions because I, I'm not sure what's going on with the town. And I, I certainly understand the applicant's um, wariness about paying for a traffic engineering study. Are we asking the applicant to do that? Or is it? I'd be happy to update you on it. But the council discussed this. I think it was last week's May 10th meeting. And they were, there was definitely some councilors who were very interested in seeing a crosswalk put there. Um, it's just that. Um, and they have asked the Maine Department of Transportation to do a speed survey again and look at the opportunity to reduce the speed in that one area so that they could put a crosswalk in. And I haven't heard an answer to that. So maybe you, you've got better connections than me. But even in the event, let's say that the Department of Transportation agrees that the speed limit can be reduced, at that point, you still can't put the sidewalk, the crosswalk in until you deal with the accessibility and the safe landing zone issue. And that's basically a question of cost. I mean, you would have to build a sidewalk. Doesn't, there, there isn't any real specificity. It doesn't have to be that big. But there has to be a sidewalk that connects on the other side of the road. And the question is, should this applicant be responsible for the cost of that? or should the town be responsible for it if they are successful in getting that 35 mile an hour speed limit? Uh, because they haven't, the town hasn't committed to doing the, any of this work, but there was definitely interest by the council in pursuing a crosswalk. And, and we're not say, saying that the applicant is if, committed. Either. In my opinion, <laughs> you know, you adopt conditions 
and then town staff find a way to make those conditions work. And in my conversation with the applicant and in my conversation with the public works director, I mean, our feeling was you, you were told to put a crosswalk in. The, the things that have to happen to make the crosswalk happen are part of what you're required to do. So if you leave it the way it is right now, um, unless you say something specific to the contrary, in my opinion, the applicant would be responsible for building that sidewalk on the other side of the road, making sure they do the, the topography changes so it's ADA accessible. I mean, frankly, I don't think the paint costs that much. It's putting the sidewalk in on the other side, which could be expensive, depending on how far it goes. I guess my concern is the whole viability of the idea of excess parking at St. Bartholomew's when the information we have here seems to be saying this is not a safe place to cross the road. As it and exists. This, as it exists, this is an unsafe place to cross the road, yet we're setting up a site plan where some of what we consider to be required excess parking is located a spot that's not safe to get to. And I mean, we can drive by the facility as it now exists, and when the restaurant is operating, it is, it's great to see, it's very successful. And that parking lot is pretty much maxed out, and there are no new seats there, or not very many yet. And here we're talking about a lot more new seats. Not supposed to be any, but go ahead. <laughs> I haven't been in, I haven't counted. Um, but the parking lot is very full. And we're talking about providing some overflow parking across the street, yet we're saying it's really not safe, or yet the DOT regulations are telling us that might not be a safe situation. So I guess I'm reluctant to simply go ahead and say, you can have all your excess seats with whatever additional parking that's going to generate, yet your overflow parking is in a location that really doesn't provide for pedestrians to get across the street. So I'm very troubled by simply taking it off of our site plan. Um, I, also, I would agree with Victoria too in terms of giving it a focus in terms of crossing exactly. the road. I think that was the discussion and, and I guess I, I do take a little bit of issue with what Maureen was saying. I, I truly did not envision creation of, you know, the applicants, on the applicants full nickel, the creation of something on the other side. Um, I, we certainly weren't aware of the dimensions of the problem when we approved the con No, and, I, and to be honest with you, I think if, if we would have known the, the extent of the impact, I, I'm not sure we would have agreed to that condition of approval either. Well, yeah, it's easier to say in hindsight, but I don't <laughs> doubt that. But I'm not sure we would have uh, agreed well, to the, the parking agreement with St. Bart's as being an adequate response to your site plan. So I think it, Given it, that now we don't have a crosswalk. Right. It's sort of all part of the package. And if that part of the package doesn't work, well, maybe the parking resolution doesn't work either. So to piecemeal pull out the crosswalk part seems to me to be not on its face appropriate and perhaps needing some more discussion. The flip side is we have this condition. The applicant has asked for a certain amendment. But it doesn't, you know, at some level, this, this condition doesn't have much, many, much teeth to it. It doesn't. But, <laughs> because you know, it, as a I compromise. Mean, if, if the state simply says, we will not lower the speed limit there, how do you hold the applicant to something he can't do? It, it, she, you don't. And I'm okay with that because I think the plan um, to have the parking cross the street is not a safe one. So I don't think see the that parking should be across the street. I think it should be on the shoulder of the road, just like the overflow on the Good Table Parks, or just like the, the, the uh, walkers at Crescent Beach in the Winter Park. But I and think they uh, can. I'm okay with but, that. But they but can they still can go that, forward. They can do that now. Right. So I think that's where the yeah, overflow but, of parking should be on the shoulder. Right. But he's saying that in the grassy area. Are you saying that we should remove this, or I, I'm suggesting that the way it sits right now, if they simply cannot get the approvals, they're not in violation of their approval and they can push forward with what they're doing because appropriate approvals are simply not never going to get granted. They therefore, park across therefore the street. Therefore, they, they do not have to install the crosswalk, but they can still but do all the other things right, excellent point. in there. So yeah. I don't, you know, and I'm not, I don't know which way to go on this because mm -hmm. um, part of me thinks maybe we should set a public hearing and hash it out some more, but I'm not inclined yeah, to pull it out right now, but at the same time, I'm kind of uncomfortable with the way it's sitting. Right, right. Good point. Yes. Remind me of, of the site plan and what the required number of parking spaces 
is for the number of seats and employees at the restaurant, and, that was and how many are yes, provided on site. The uh, I think the the required number of parking spaces uh, by ordinance is one for every four seats, and there were enough, as I recall. Yeah. One for every staff, and we have 25. I believe 26 uh, parking spaces on site. That are designated, and we also indicated that there were probably another five or six or more that could be accommodated because we've got a double wide one way uh, aisle where we don't have parking on both sides. We can accommodate some parallel parking in there for overflow. So we figured that we're probably in the neighborhood of 30 to 32 spaces on site. Available. And how many Cut. spaces do you have now at Rudy's? Well, I think it's well less that than that, isn't it? Well, it's hard to, it's, yeah. you can't really, they're not defined, gotcha. so it's really yeah. kind of um, hard to say. Uh, correct right. me if I'm wrong, but I think Barbara's point is accurate. I, I think you met the letter of the ordinance with just your on site parking. Oh, we did. We did. So that's why, this is why it gets a, we, yeah, that, yeah. That's we open up another question. Pandora's box by saying, okay, now it's not even required that they have the parking across the street. So once we've accepted that, do we then have to ensure that the safe pedestrian access back and forth? So I kind of view this as a, I won't say a compromise, but okay, we got the extra parking across the street. We've asked them to, if they can put in a crosswalk, uh, not realizing the dimensions of that problem. Right. But and, and, you know, I, I do remember, and maybe it's in the meetings, but there was some discussion about the lack of sidewalk connecting that, that uh, parking lot to Route 77. And I think... Well, on the same part side. Yes. And I think I, that uh, you guys were pretty comfortable with, with not having Now you're telling me you there. cannot build the sidewalk under those circumstances. Is that right? Yeah. That, well, that's slightly different than what I understood. I still envisioned, you know, for relatively minimal cost, we get some increase in safety, which is you can paint the sidewalk, you can crosswalk. paint the crosswalk yeah. on the right. on on the existing road. Now, for several reasons, that appears to be impossible. Uh, versus elevating the next step, which is okay. Do we require the applicant to go? That was clearly not hashed out at the meeting, in my opinion. I mean, that's. I think in fairness, maybe that's what we need to do is put it out there and have a public hearing on it, take some input, and then make a decision. But, but if they're not, <laughs> but if there's no violation of the current requirements and there is adequate parking on the site, aren't we going beyond the zoning, the, the, our code, and saying you have to be, meet higher than the standard? Where the, yeah. and, and I don't think that's, I don't think that's our job to say they have to be more than they're supposed to be. I mean, I, I think you should put as many as you can get on the site on the site and keep working with your neighbor next door, even if you have to put in, isn't there a way to, to cut through that parking lot to get to that next parking lot without going on Davis Boy Road? Yes. Yeah, we in fact showed, I showed him at one point in time a driveway connection that kind of... Well, that's what I think... Barbara, the present owner of that other site is not willing to... I, I understand that, but Mary Page should keep trying to, to affect that. He's right. contacting me directly. He is not interested at this time. Okay. But, but, okay, I go back to my original point and also to what Liza is saying. Um, that it's probably, after listening to all this, not a good idea, I retract what I said, not a good idea to have people park across the street. That's probably not a good agreement with St. Bart's Church. Let them park on the shoulder of the road, but put in as many spaces as you possibly can. But as long as you're exceeding the number that are required in the zoning code, I, I don't see why we're asking them to do more than that. That doesn't seem very fair. You all said, Barbara, you all said? Yes. And yeah, Maureen, did you want to say something? I just had one question, because the, this applicant is going to be required to post a performance guarantee yeah. for mm -hmm. the cost of the improvements to the site, and I'm just hoping that the board makes it very clear to staff what improvements they expect to be included in that performance guarantee. Yes. That's fair. So um, I agree with Barbara that we would be overreaching to um, make Rudy's provide additional spaces above and beyond the ordinance and I would be prepared to vote on a motion removing the requirement that they secure additional spaces and removing the crosswalk 
requirement altogether. But we were not here, both of us, at the original hearing. I wouldn't be comfortable doing that without a public hearing yeah, because it was very clear from the neighbors that whatever the technical part, well, two points. First of all, the, probably the site could accommodate all of these parking spaces if you, you know, there's a place that's a double wide traffic lane. It's really not marked as a parking space and it's not intended to be marked as a parking space. So no, I, there were, I disagree with that. I, I think part of the, part of the approval, part of the, when we went through this, I think we agreed as part of the approval to add signs f talking about uh, truck and trailer parking along that side. Yeah. And that's so. either going to be in there or not, but I, I think that's my memory too is what you right. just said. But the clear sense from the neighborhood seemed to be that already it's questionable whether there's going to be enough parking. So I, I guess I would be reluctant to take out part of that solution yet leave in the other part of the solution without hearing to make sense that it re really is going to be functional to increase the, num the amount of traffic there and that there's enough place along 77 there for the number of cars that are likely to appear. And I think we have to be practical about that. And having been at that same meeting, there were about three issues the neighbors were very concerned about, and one of them was parking. The <coughs> concern was that people were going to start parking in front of their homes along that side of Shore Road, which they can do. Is, if I understand correctly, they, once they get out of the business, the, the district, they can park anywhere on the road. Is that correct? Uh, on the way down to Shore Road, some of the neighbors' homes? And that uh, was the Shore concern? Road, Route 77. Route 77, yeah. yeah you, can, a, you can park as long as, you're, as long as the tires aren't on the, on the pavement. Mm -hmm. You can park on the grass area. In the right-of-way. In the right-of-way. And I think the neighbors were concerned, very concerned, that was a major issue about people parking in front of their homes, not just in front of the restaurant. And they were glad to hear that there'd be some off-site parking. And it, it sounded like a nice compromise. It was, and, and that's why I'm not quick to pull this out either. Um, I don't know if we can change the wording um, instead of just um, agrees to install a crosswalk, agrees to stripe a crosswalk and only stripe a I don't know. I would like to see maybe the town partnership with the business district, I like to see partnerships. This is a great opportunity where the public, the private come together, both see a need. And, and I agree with you completely. The problem is going to be funding. Right, the, the funding. Yeah. <laughs> could, could, could I, want to, sure. I mean, at the town council meeting, uh, there were counselors who said there were people who are already crossing over there all the time. Um, so it's, it's already a crossing point, And there were already people who had said they wanted a crosswalk. I think the, the applicant said she supported a crosswalk. And if the town were to go in today and put in a crosswalk, they would be responsible for putting in sidewalks on both sides of Route 77. And this applicant is already putting in a crosswalk on a sidewalk on one side of Route 77. I'd again say that I think the cost really is in the construction of sidewalks rather than the paint that goes into the crosswalk. So in one sense, you could argue that the applicant is already partnering up with the town. They're doing one side. Well, that's the point. It's who's going to pay for the other side because that's part of the issue. That's right. I mean, I, I am not prepared to vote in favor of a motion removing this tonight. I, I would like to set it down for public hearing next month. That would be my preference. I, I have to entertain motions and then um, take it from there. Now. I have a question for Maureen. If an applicant asks for an amendment to a certain thing, what rights do we have as a board to revisit that amendment? I mean, the short question is, can it be changed in a way different than what the applicant is asking? Mm -hmm. Because they're opening up the door yes. for an amendment to a, sub to yes. a site plan. The, the board okay. is constrained right. by what you're always constrained by, which, which is the standards of the ordinance uh, but yes, you, whenever you ask for an amendment, you can look at the whole thing. Usually you tend to look only at related issues. And then the, that's the first step. The second step, the question would be, so the only way to stop that would be if they pulled, they withdrew the request for the amendment. That's number one. Number two, um, if they did that, they could always come back, you know, some months later after maybe some town council hearings and sort of see what the MDOT is doing. and ask us again for, mm -hmm. and have a little more information because part of my concern is 
We just don't know what MDOT's going to do about this, the speed limit. Because if you get a letter from them saying, just not going to happen, I think that's, to my mind, a different scenario than potentially it could, but it doesn't look likely, but it might. I have a harder time making the decision in a vacuum like that. So I'm inclined to, 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 to ask for a motion to put it on for a public hearing next month, and then the applicant decide whether he wants to push forward, and maybe we can get some more feedback from both the town council and MDOT on, on where this is going. But there are five of us here. Somebody else has to make a motion, and then we have to hash it out and vote on it. <laughs> any, anyone else wish to make any comments? I just want to make sure I understand. Well, I, so if we do that, the issue that we'll be considering isn't narrowly whether we remove condition number four or not. We could expand beyond that with related site plan changes? You can, I mean, it's, it's open to you. Okay. Meaning not just four, but other conditions. You've got to be able to bring four board members with you, but, mm -hmm. right. you know. Right. Okay. I don't know how to word this motion. <laughs> um, do we table it and set it for public hearing? Is that what we would do, Maureen? Be, yes. What, I mean, I'm not making a motion, and I'm not telling you what motion to make, but if you were going to use the motion in front of you right. and you wanted to change it, um, where it has the parentheses, mm -hmm. instead of approved or denied, you could say, be tabled until the regular June 15th meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. I'd like to make a motion. Um, Thank you. <laughs> be it ordered that based on the material submitted and the facts presented, the request um, of Rudy's on the Cape located at 15, 517 Ocean House Road for an amendment to the previously approved site plan to delete condition four, which requires installation of a crosswalk, be tabled to the regular June 15th meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. <coughs> Excuse me. Hold on a second. Second. A motion having been made by Eliza and seconded by you. Mm -hmm. um, any discussion on the motion? Go ahead. I, I would just like to make it clear, make sure the applicant understands that if this comes up for a public hearing, that as far as I'm concerned, the compromise that included parking at St. Bart's also included a safe crossing across the street. So to the extent we are opening up the crosswalk, we are reopening the issue of the adequacy of parking for the site plan. And if, that, if the applicant wants to proceed, that would be my understanding of what I would intend to explore and would think would be open for explanation at the public hearing. But also, the applicant's position from the beginning has always been we meet the standards of the ordinance by just what we have on site. That has been the applicant's sure. position, okay. and, and the applicant could certainly demonstrate that again sure. with you know, the final version of the parking lot plan that shows adequate parking spaces and, and count them out. But to me, this reopens the issue of well, adequacy can I, of parking. Can I get some clarification? Because, uh, uh, Peter, you made a comment earlier, somebody made a comment that, um, that this could open it up to it. Anything related to the site <coughs> approval could be kind of brought forward again for for review, and I guess I just want some clarification on that because that's, that's why I asked. That's why I asked Maureen. Because that's that's pretty serious. Well, I understand um, that, and, and uh, I, you've come forward with a request for an amendment for a specific, the removal of a specific condition, which I agree with Elaine ties to other conditions. My opinion would be that's all fair game, but I don't know that. The whole approval is then back on the table, in my opinion. I, Maureen may have a different view on that, and, and candidly, the town attorney might have a different view on that. But I, I think if the applicant is asking for a change, to me, the change and anything related to the change is, is fair to discuss. But I don't think we can start talking about, you know, where the whatever other conditions we imposed on that. That's my that's yeah, my I, take on. I it. agree, and if that's not the case, then. Uh, we need, we to, need know. to know that now. Yes, clearly. Go ahead. And to be frank, I'm not, I'm not in any way suggesting right. that the whole site plan should be opened up. Right. What I don't have is a way to figure out how to tell board members they can't go there. 
I know, but if you open it up to a public hearing, you know, mm -hmm. that's uh, everything's going to come, and, come and, back up and again. The reality I'm, not inclined, of, I'm not inclined to revisit that. The reality of a public hearing is we can't censor what people say. But that, I mean, there's what they say, and then there's what the board does with what they say. And my question to Maureen was, are there legal limits on what this board can do when an applicant asks for an amendment? And I, I my view is the amendment and anything related to it, I would clearly say no. Beyond that, I'm just not sure. Do you have a different if you review the ordinance, it doesn't limit in any way what happens when you ask for an amendment. Um, I, I mean, most planning boards will restrict their review yeah. to the issue that's before them because they've that. already disposed of all the other issues. From a but if a majority of the board wanted to go someplace else, I'm, uh, I'm at a loss to to see a way in the ordinance that you could restrict them. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm certainly not in favor of that, but I, I, I just don't want to be in a position whereby what you ask for, you've opened a legal door. Right. To, well, to I, be honest with you, you know, this request actually came from the town to us. I fair. So, um, and that's an know, important equitable point, I think, to bring up. I mean, we, we were not the initiators of this. Because of the impossibility issue you, that they were confronting? Yes. And that would be my reason to, to limit the discussion as a chair. But at the same time, if there's a legal avenue that someone says, no, that's not what the ordinance says, I, I mean, I don't have the final say on that. I mean, the, the, the real problem was that you, you ended up having larger policy issues beyond the planning board's purview and, quite frankly, well beyond the applicant's ability to exercise. Sure. Um, you had issues with the police department and with the main department of transportation and with the public works department and with the town council. And for all of those reasons, the manager recommended that this applicant ask for an amendment to lift this requirement because they have to meet the requirement in order to um, get their final site plan approved and open their restaurant to the new seats that they're proposing. So I would thank you for coming in at the town's request, and I just want to say I wouldn't be inclined to opening up past this parking issue for what that's worth. Barbara? I, I, again, I wasn't here, but I still feel this is unfair. And, and I'm probably the one that had some questions about the whole thing that didn't get resolved the last time, which is irrelevant. But I think that we are holding this this applicant to a standard that we simply shouldn't yeah. be holding them to. And especially when the town tells them to come in and ask to have it removed. I mean, I think this is totally unfair. And I will vote against the amendment if it's brought up. It may be the only one. But I just don't think this is proper. I think we are exceeding our boundaries. We're voting against the amendment. About this amendment that, that Liza has proposed, I will vote against it. Oh. When if, when and if it comes up, because I don't think it's fair to ask this applicant to create more parking than they're required to create. No, the, app, the, the amendment would be to remove this condition. I know that, but he already has enough parking on the site, and we're asking, we're asking him to remove a condition they cannot meet because it's impossible. The town manager asks him to come in and ask, and ask that it be removed, and here we're saying, no, we're going to have another public hearing again. On, on, the issue is on what, and my, he can't my do this, so I don't know what my inclination would be hearing. on the issue itself. Yeah, but what are, you, what are you going to open up the public hearing for? They can't do it at this moment because MDOT won't allow them to do it. If you permanently remove the condition, if it's available in the future, but they can't at a, get at a fair the cost point. to the applicant, my view, and I think Victoria and Elaine share this, is they should. Put it in. Well, then They're already building the, totally the their side of the street sidewalk. They were going to put the paint in the crosswalk, and the issue to me is the landing. I personally don't think the applicant should have to pay for it, but I think if there's an opportunity for the town possibly to pick up that side, we, we, we should not remove the condition that the applicant should do it. Well, then and that's what I want a public hearing rewrite on. The I condition. don't want a public hearing on the whole plan. I, I, I can clearly say that, that hearing, but I don't want you to walk into to something you're not prepared to understand that could go beyond it because I, I can't limit it, that discussion. I know, and I, and I think if that were the case, we would probably withdraw the 
withdraw the application. Maybe that's something we could ask the town attorney so. to clarify. And I'm, I'm not inclined whether we can and whether we do are two different things. If we can, that doesn't mean I, I'm getting a sense from Liza. She's not inclined to start looking at the whole thing. I'm certainly not inclined to do that. And this is just a straw poll. Why not just rewrite the amendment? We have the right to do that. Rewrite so the it, issue. Is rewrite, I mean, so rewrite the condition just the way you said it. I mean, very similar to the way you said it. Just rewrite it. And that, I'm not prepared to do that tonight. No. I think yeah. I'd want some more input on that. And that's what I want a public hearing on, and that's why I think I'd, I'd also, did we also put as a condition that they would obtain an agreement with St. Bart's for yes. 15? Yeah, they have. Yeah, right. we have. Yeah. They have. So what do we do with that floating out there now that we realize this is unsafe? Do we that, pull that they, they still condition? Have. They still that's have. what's up for debate, so in my opinion, is do you yeah. secure parking across the street if there's no crosswalk? I say if there's no crosswalk, there's no parking across the street. It's safe You're to inclined to get rid of both. Or I'm need, inclined to get rid need, of both, yeah. yes. So, but that's what we'll be debating, I hope. Exactly. And taking yeah. input on. Yeah, and taking input on. Thank you. I guess that's why I'm inclined to, and I'm inclined to limit the debate, I guess. That's, but I, that, that may not be within our ability to do. That doesn't mean we have to consider it. I mean, somebody else wants to talk about something else. Again, we can still not consider that. Okay. We have a motion on the floor that's been properly made and seconded. We've had some extensive discussion and debate on the motion. Is there any other discussion or debate on the motion on the floor? Hearing none, call a roll. Those in favor of the motion just that Liza made earlier and that Elaine seconded to table to the June 15th meeting and have a public hearing on the proposed amendment. In favor of that motion. Opposed to that motion. Motion carries four to one. Thank you. We'll see you then. The uh, applicant obviously perhaps. has an opportunity between now and then to withdraw its request at any okay. time. Thank, Thank you. you. Right here, a motion to adjourn. <laughs> oh, wait. No. Okay. All right. Um, nothing else on the agenda. Motion to adjourn. Barbara made it. Nobody second? Liza seconded all in favor. I have nothing. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you.